DS, what do they have in the tank? And is it going to be enough to throw off JDG? Or are we going to see something similar to the last game where a number one seed from the LCK took on a Plains team? And it, uh, it was a rough affair. It was, but T1 also took on TL and that was close. That so was I'm, I'm very I'm, close. I'm hoping that that one's the one that happens. Darius going to be the first one banned away here from Adam. Normally we'd say the team name when there's a ban that comes in, but no, that's an Adam ban. Um, he can have that one all to himself. Talia going to be taken off the board here as well. Kanavi um, following in the footsteps of some phenomenal uh, Talia players. And he is certainly one to watch out for as well. So good flex ban. Uh, Knight, of course, fantastic on that pick also. The Orianna feeling a little bit like a ban that will have to come through throughout this tournament. I think Orianna, Orianna bans are going to ramp up as this tournament goes on, just given some of the names that we are going to see here. And 369, not allowed to play the cannon. Certainly, uh, it's one of his picks that he does still like to go to that isn't of that tank variety, like they were talking about. And Adam gonna probably uh, flash a few more options here. Oh yeah, oh he will. So what I'm looking towards is Zaya and Rakan, or one of the two of that combo. Because I do think that Ruler, uh, yeah, letting, yeah. Uh, my point, letting Ruler play Zaya, no, no. Uh, you know, maybe you have a counterplay. Is it is it much better to face up against something like Kaisa? It's always going to be choose your, you know, uh, least. Yeah, choose your, exactly. Um, so I, I don't think you're ever going to feel amazing, but I think the Zaya, particularly for him, both in the LCK and in the LPL, is such a standout pick. Obviously also where he got his world skin. So denying that, I think is a great start here from BDS. The only downside is I am wondering if JDG is actually going to keep the counter pick, given that they're red side all the way to the end. Uh, because if Adam is forced to uh, blind pick, for example, a Renekton, like they did many a time, that's when we've seen BDS struggle a little bit more. Yeah, Viego being hovered here by Sheo, I feel like that could be an early Viego pick. Rakan up and available, they can lock in the Zaya Rakan if they'd like to, but the Vi going to be taken first, a very red theme. I do very much like the color coordination thus far. Not giving too much away in a composition like this, you have a lot of engage via the Vi, a lot of pick opportunity, things like that as well, but you can kite back with the Zaya and the Rakan. So Jarvan gonna be locked in here. Man, I'm just, I'm feeling like I'm back in the LPL, which was so many years ago now, but Jarvan certainly a staple. He's, he's just, it's just Jarvan. You know, he's been virtually unchanged for like, what, 10, 10, 11 years at this point. As soon as Ambition retired, though, I felt like Jarvan fell out of the meta forever in Korea. Except so I, I've missed Jarvan. my opportunities. Yeah. yeah, apart from support, no, please stop. I, 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 I don't, I don't want to be reminded of that. What I do think is that uh, JDG already have a very strong core. I do like the Rakan and Vi. I think that having uh, an aggressive dive duo like that really allows you to uh, reliably put threat on Ruler. Now, with missing playing Alistair, consistently getting on top of him might be tough, but... Uh, We'll see if BDS can try and find an angle. You can add like an Ari on top of this. I'm wondering if JDG want to just not risk it and ban it away, even though I don't think Knight in 1v1 will have any issues, just to ensure that there is not too much backline dive, because eventually you can kind of hit a point where no matter how good Ruler is positioning, they're going to be able to get on top of it. Yeah, you don't even need to ban it because they have the first pick opportunity. Uh, you can pick just pick that one away. Knight, a fantastic Ari player just in general. Um, so they are going to run out the very end of this clock, and it will be the Olaf taken away. So the, the, the O and the D from the guards, it's just GS now. That's all we have. It's a convenience story here in Korea. It uh, is. Fun fact. There we go. Um, the last ban from BDS. Going to be the last one here. And then we're going to be getting, getting into what the next options are. Both of these teams just have so, many, so much flexibility. We don't really know. Uh, what the identity is going to be just yet. It's going to be the Renekton ban away. Pick has dropped in priority throughout the first half of the day. But it has been something that BDS has kind of defaulted to. Wonder if we're going to see them just pick up Cassante. That feels like the obvious pick here. A pick that can both dive aggressively. Uh, obviously, as mentioned, 369 I think is very capable of playing carry just matchups. Garen. Just Garen it as well. Yeah? Why not blind Garen? Does 369 have a blind Teemo prepared? That's the question. We'll see where it's, Adam it's, is it's actually be, going right? to go. And they're just going to lock it in. Okay. Um, blind Garen, not something that I would recommend. There we go. Uh, and there Cassio are going to come in as well for Nuke. Yeah. I think, like, honestly, I love this approach from BDS. They're like, guys, what do you want to play? 
Let's just make sure that you're as comfortable as possible. We'll see how it goes. And Shea, of course, 13 and four, I believe, on the Vi at this point in time. Extraordinarily dominant on that pick. And Orn is going to be the consideration here and will be locked in for 369. He's pretty good at this champion. Um, very much so. Yeah. Um, but I don't love the matchup into Garen uh, with the amount of true damage that he is able to do. Uh, the main worry that I do have for BDS is if you look at the JDG composition, this is a composition that at any point in the game is able to find a team fight win, right? It is very short range, and that's in theory where picks like Zaya and Cassiopeia should have a field day. Yeah. Uh, I don't expect Ruler to go for the AP build. I think that that would lead the team being way over indexed on AP, makes itemization very easy for BDS. So Ruler is actually going to have to come close. And even with his level of positioning into Zaya and into Cassio, that can be a risk. Uh, if BDS can, you know, make it through the laning phase, try to keep good track of Kanavi with that Garen wildcard, even though at this point it shouldn't really be a wildcard anymore, right? No, We've it's seen not. Them go no, it's just uh, an very pick. consistently. Um, I think this is as, uh, as good of an angle as you're going to get if you're BDS. No, absolutely. And I just love the amount of comfort. I love that they have just over-indexed into that, not really worried about uh, what JDG are going to do. And JDG have a pretty stock standard composition, right? They but do. They, they don't have an overabundance of damage. And there could be an angle here, like you were talking about. Damage and range, as far as where this mid game is going to come around. Ari's notorious for not necessarily having those high damage builds, what with the Everfrost and Horizon Focus and things like that coming on through. Um, Ruler is, of course, going to be a massive problem. But uh, we'll see whether they can mitigate that with uh, something that they've prepared earlier. Let's jump onto the Rift. Here for the first, fourth game of the day. JDG, definitely tournament favorites up against BDS, a team that honestly, I doubted up against Golden Guardians in the World Qualifying Series. And they have been just crossing out our doubts we over were, and over. We were there. We were expecting it to be a long day. Exactly. It was not when, a long day. When PSG was up 2-0. Oh yeah. I mean, that was also a time where the doubts came in. But remember, guys, you can connect your League of Legends account with Prime Gaming to grab the exclusive uh, experimentation emote. Uh, so make sure you do that. Just free stuff, you know? It's just the best. We almost saw a Heimerdinger today as well. Adam went Ignite as well. Which, I mean, you uh, have to. No, any Garen, if you're ever going to play Garen, you have to take Ignite. I know, I know. It's like, so I you know. know how Hooney gets really bothered by Rumbles that don't take Ignite? Same, same principle. It's no, worse. If, if you don't take Ignite on Garen, it's worse. Yeah, of course. I understand, just uh, maybe, you know, you were not a play-ins watcher, which probably the best play-ins uh -huh. we've had, uh, the former change, I think, arousing success, a lot of competitive matches, a lot of cool storylines, both for teams and, and in between the regions. Um, but but this is not, this, this has happened a lot. We've seen uh, this not just in the uh, LEC, Adam going for his Garen, but it's been wildly successful. And at the same time, I do think for JDG, uh, neither of these two picks, the Garen and the Cassio, should come as a surprise. No. It mainly becomes about how well is JDG able to deal with it. Because if all goes evenly with the team fighting uh, capabilities that JDG have, it's it's hard to imagine them losing, right? Because of how dominant they've been throughout the entirety of the year. As a very early invade here from Shale actually puffs straight from his red buff uh, to Kanavi. The red Kanavi, uh, I, I love this. It's just no holes barred. They're like, let's let's just yeah. try and get as much as we can for free and uh, and see whether we can come out on top. As 369 adds some brittle to Adam, and Adam doesn't have the greatest time there. And, you know, there are just those times where some Ornn players just absolutely obliterate a matchup, and um, you're just... you're just sitting there wondering why not everyone just picks Ornn all, all the, the time. time. Yeah. Um, and it can. It can just be some of those things that happens. Uh, we'll see whether Adam is going to be able to get through because right now things are relatively even. Adam on the push. And Kanavi going to get the bad news that his blue buff has been oh, taken away. Oh, yeah. I, Kanavi definitely uh, should be suspicious. I like this from Sheodo. If Kanavi does make a mistake, walk up, might be into deep trouble. Um, oh, they're trying to get the jump on him. Yeah, the Vault Breaker does come on through here. Let's see whether Nuke can get himself in, but yeah. it's going to be the charm and the. Flag drag is going to get Kanavi out. So in the end, you know, some buttons being pressed and some damage being exchanged. So you're not going to find too much as he is just going to try and deny yeah. the opposite side takeaway of that blue buff. And that's really important, right? And this is where the Garen actually does a lot. Garen <laughs> or uh, Adam should be able to rim, although right now actually is down a level. 
So 369 has been able to maintain control over this lane. And if uh, Shale doesn't have Adam with priority, then Kanavi can actually play way more aggressive. Same for Knight. Well, Shale's uh, well, just going to flip. immediately get towards this top side. It's a big wave stacked up, and Kanavi has now dealt with the crab. Could be a 2v2 incoming very, very quickly. Adam's just going to flash for it. Oh. They find the silence, and 369 will be put down first blood to the Garen. And the play. From BDS was a risk if Kanavi path stopped, they might be in trouble, but no! 369 gets caught off guard, Shale gets the flash of Vault Breaker, and as a result, early kill to come through here for Adam at the cost of a blue buff, considering Shale invaded, gonna be more than happy to pay that. I'm starting to think that if Nocturne presses E on any BDS player, it doesn't work. It just doesn't do anything. That's what I'm starting to figure, because there is no fear from this squad. And the KBS Arena, they're into it. This would be an incredible story. However, it is still very, very early on. It's a, it's a kill. Yeah, we, we yeah. Should, it's good. It's I'm going to celebrate it chronically. You, hey, you best believe. I like the attitude. <laughs> as uh, yeah, Adam does have to unfortunately peace out. Kanavi. Keeping, and that's a big wave. Yeah, that's a, that's not only a big wave, but uh, I think for 69 going to be able to get the cancel as well. And Adam, uh, the virtue of his Ignite, does not have TP. So he's going to try and just eat this. He doesn't have flash. Oh, he, he doesn't have courage. Hit. He's got courage. He's not going to get knocked up. He's brave. Oh, this time around. And this is exactly what we were talking about. Um, he's not out of the woods just yet, though. And there's the knock up. Does find the silence here onto 369, who may fall. But the damage to the lane is the biggest problem. He's not even going to go down. 369 expends the flash. Berserker's Greaves now picked up for Adam, but this is in shambles up here. Oi. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, and as the dust settles, JDG have a decent advantage uh, as far as money is concerned. The first blood, wasn't that something? Yeah. So Kanavi ensuring that 369, his game remains playable by putting a lot of pressure early on here. Now, this will lead to a dragon being taken. That is the counter response. Again, this player, Sheo actually sneaking out of vision, right? Not being spotted by Kanavi. They think that he is just in his own blue side jungle. Completely catches 369 off guard. Uh, but then we see 369 then gets to teleport back to lane with a full health bar. Adam, no such luxury, playing Ignite. And while the initial gank doesn't work, there is no one nearby. We see as well, and I think that it's the right call from BDS. You're never going to be here in time. Uh, and there is no way that Adam should be able to survive that. Uh, they get a Drake. Uh, but I think that JDG making sure that the lane doesn't snowball too far out of control, <laughs> very big. Uh, does that bother Adam? No. I like, I like how he gets a cheer from the crowd here. They love it, Just man. for farming between turrets. He's just and proxying. 100% deserved. 100% deserved. Um, 369 deals with the, mi with the minion wave, and oh, uh, the he pinks. will retain a slight lead. They know. Yeah, Kanavi. Oh, flag first. It's always what you do. Yeah, that, that's that's good, uh, good, good reading. That's demasking in a sense. I think you get that if you play Jarvan into Garen. As Hepapold, he's going to come through here. Brov just getting himself out, but the call of the Forge God does come down. Adam says, "I do not fear goats," and he is just going to walk out of the way. A ram is a ram a goat? I think it's a. Is the Ford I Atlas? I am. I, I don't feel like I am well equipped to speak on the topic of biology, so I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Huh. I'm not gonna default and let you. Enough, Maybe that one's ruler. Yeah, Crowny throwing out some feathers here, missing. Going to take a bit of a uh, bit of damage. The ruler not wanting to take that one lying down. However, the Void Seeker is not going to find its target. And if we actually check into how this lane is going, kind of fine, pretty even between the two. As three six nine. Um, yeah, Adam just not really looking too worried about what the Orn is doing and is consistently getting the shove as... Okay, Kanavi now going to find a little bit of a knock-up. But with this wave being so large, 369 not going to be able to leave because he needs that money. There is also the fact that Adam is now level 6, right? So both with Ignite and, uh, and his ultimate, you Ooh, really, really have to respect. Even if you trade evenly, I think the wave state at this point, you, you'd still be fine. Uh, killing Adam at, at, at that point in time might actually be beneficial for 369, even if you trade one to one. But uh, you want to make sure that he doesn't get further ahead. I think that Garen actually uh, is able to do a lot better in late game scenarios than a lot of people think, particularly against short range AD carries like the Kai'Sa. But 
I do think you are somewhat reliant on not being made completely obsolete, right? And I think the attention that both junglers are paying towards the top side of the map thus far in this game is testament to that. Everyone's roaming besides the AD carries. BDS look like they might want to still go for this. They do have LeBrov there. Yeah, Kanabi just immediately going to get ulted, silenced as well. It's going to be difficult as the ult comes down. Cataclysm is there, but Adam is not scared of a ring of rocks. 369 now using the Bellows Breath to try and deny the CC, but it's not going to deny the knockup. And Nuke's going to grab that kill. It's now 3 to 1 to BDS. And BDS not only are going to get the kills, they're also going to be able to take themselves. The Rift Herald, and I keep on it. We know what Garen does, right? <laughs> like, we know at this point, he silences you. And he then he spins, goes around around a lot. And yeah. then he ults, and then with Ignite, you die. Yeah. Zero counterplay. He's the best, the best champion in the game. And we have seen enough of JDG to know that this alone not really going to dissuade anyone. But it continues the trend, I think, that we've been seeing today that was started by T1. NTL, yeah, the best of one. It just, Adam reminds me of one of my favorite uh, Kobe quotes, uh, which is I think in re uh, reference to Zatai, and he just says he plays Garen on purpose, and Adam absolutely epitomizes that, and it's not even a meme, no. it's not even weird. He just he wins with his champion, and I think Asterix mentioned this as well. In, in the rare instances where JDG does get beaten. It's when Kanavi's not having a great day. That's Nuke. Yeah. The Ram going to come through, gets the flash. Out of Nuke, good respect there. But no flash on Cassiopeia. Certainly an opportunity here for JDG. Yeah, great roam there from 369. No flash on Cassiopeia, and particularly with the amount of aggressive pressure that's available is big. But that roam will cost him. We see here, right? Um, it's a lot of plays. Yeah, he's up, uh, he's up 1K gold. And he's just, he's up there, he has a red buff, Atlas. He's casually strolling out of like every button press care. as well. Just wanders towards the plate, oh, collects Shea. that. Oh yeah, Sheo gonna get knocked up here by the flag and drag missing. Just looking for the headbutt pole angle, he'll find it. Sheo lit on fire, is going to be able to get out of the Cataclysm with a Volt Breaker. And he'll be A-OK -okay for now. Does have to expend the flash. Lebrov in danger, but he's Rakan. Gonna be a good trade there for JDG. Sheo not having flash uh, does take away a lot of the pressure, particularly of Ruler, in a fight that might be coming up. And JDG is able to stay relatively in, but if Adam gets like first turret bot off of this, uh, yeah, uh, which, which is not very far off, Atlas, yeah. and, and becomes an unanswerable threat in the side lane, we'll see how JDG finds a way to deal with that. They are gonna be able to even out the Drake count. Next one going to be a Mountain Soul. Imagine if Adam presses W when he has a Mountain Soul. That sounds a little bit frightening. And JDG now just looking to defend uh, around this map. I, I imagine that JDG have absolutely no worries at all. Like, I imagine the comms are still fine. Oh, for sure. They're not worried about how this one's going. But uh, I tell you what, very proud of how BDS have played this early game out thus far. And something I want to highlight as well, BDS is known for the dragon stacking, right? They really love playing towards that objective. If you pick up a ton of, of defensive uh, resi right, resistances, uh, MRM armor, where does JDG damage actually come from? Because when we get to late game, it'll yeah. just be Ruler. Like, obviously, we joke a lot about Orn and his ambient damage. Same for Kanavi. Jarvan isn't really a tank, he's more of a bruiser. But I, I do think that champions like the uh, really entire top side of JDG don't really get to be as big of a threat once you do stack a ton of free resistances, and particularly with uh, some of the builds, right? Obviously, you mentioned already, Adam uh, surely going to be going towards at least the semi-tanky builds uh, with the, the W added to the Dragons, but they do actually need to get the Dragons, and we haven't seen a 5v5 yet, and that is where many teams are unable to match up to what JDG offers. This turret though is gone, yep, and Sheo's here. They're looking for the Demolish proc, and now 369 is in trouble. However, Kanavi, Knight, both of them moving on away. up. And Adam just gets himself out of there. Did you know you press Q and you run fast? Uh, Sheo actually, the reason he gets out there, I think 369 knew, is because of the empowered uh, Herald recall. Otherwise yeah. he would have died. Yeah. Able to make it out, and now, BDS will have the Herald. If they can leverage that Herald into a Mountain Drake early on, 
Setup's going to be a maze, but again, we need to hold off of on any really big judgment until we see a 5v5. I want to see JDG Rula do some things yeah. with some champions in the area. As for. As, all right, not going to get the knockup onto Sheo. He's going to answer with his ult. The Everfrost is fantastic, and now the Ram comes in. Petrifying Gaze comes down, though. Kanavi's in trouble, but he survives for so long. One for one so far. The Bellows breath coming through, and Nuke will be pounded by the hammer of the Blacksmith. And LeBrock just headbutted out of the fight. JDG striking back. Case in point there. JDG sending multiple members towards the mid lane. Able to punish BDS. Little bit of greed there from Adam. Could have just gone for Kanavi straight up, but instead tried to get the kill on Knight. Knight's able to get out. As a result, 369 can just keep going forward aggressively. But still, even despite this, I think that uh, with the top side turret, gold lead is there. Now, again, I'm going to be looking towards the dragon. If BDS gets to like a soul point in this game, you can leverage, as we see in the MasterCard, lane economy snapshot. That 1300 gold lead on Garen in a situation where JDG have to answer you every single Drake could be really valuable. It's, uh, this is not how I was expecting um, this game to go. Uh, however, JGG have had slower early games in the past. This is just really nicely played. Um, I really like the Everfrost from Knight, uh, certainly demonstrating that he's still got it. Petrifying Gaze was good, but with 369 turning up the right time, just a bit rough. Yeah, Adam there also. Actually, in hindsight, I think go for Knight might have been the right call there. I don't think you ever killed 369. Also, uh, importantly, uh, the fact that Kanavi not able to hit the flag and drag there could have made that play a lot more secure because then you don't have to go as deep yeah. and use your ultimate in a more defensive way. Knight immediately gets the setup. Uh, not going to end up being the case. And uh, Rift Herald about a minute away as Adam roams towards the bot side. And I expect, yeah, just trying to make the play here towards this turret. Take that down before Dragon spawns and Ruta can't do anything. Yeah, uh, Adam just going to demolish that one. His stride breaker has been completed. Even more ability haste on top of that. As he's looking for the black cleaver. And look at this man. He's spinning. Walking into the enemy jungle like he owns the place. And because all these plays are working out for BDS, Adam isn't actually falling behind, right? 369 is able to farm his way back in the game. Actually has an experience lead. As, oh, Ruler does have ult. Is that enough? Yeah, Strybreaker is not going to connect, but he is going yeah. to be able to get himself out. Does have to expend the killer instinct. And JDG, also on the other side of the map, going to collect themselves a Rift Herald. Second one being Shirley. Not exactly as high value as her sister Shelly, but still going to be able to try and break open some of these turrets here for JDG. This Crowny in this mid lane will be securing the minions, getting everything sorted out. Still, 2,000 gold lead for BDS is nothing to scoff at whatsoever. They'll be aiming for this Drake that is just spawning one second's time, there it is. And now, this time, JDG actually are the one who have the Herald available. I want to try and use that to generate Cryo in mid, force response out from BDS. Nuke, obviously, has his teleport available. Is sitting on a lot of gold, though. Has been sitting on this just uh, needlessly large rod for a while. It looks like BDS is going to at least give initial control over. And it makes sense. They want to give the time to Nuke, who I think is going to have an item finish. A lot of TP wards available, particularly that control ward there in the jungle. Yeah, Adam. Just standing on vision, he's not too worried about it, but there's the Hex Flash, Pulverize, and he's just going to be taken down back to the Drake that they'd started earlier, and now it's a four versus five. BDS just going to have to get out of here. They will have to give that one up, and Adam, unfortunate, didn't have his Flash available or anything like that, just got a little bit too overconfident. Really big win there for JDG. Able to get... Oh, they're going in. Yeah, looking for missing is their opportunity. He just presses the Unbreakable Will. And he should be all right. 369 on vision. Going to try and get over there as well. Puts a rock down. That is going to be enough to stop this one from meaning too much at all. BDS not going to really find an angle there. So back to the drawing board uh, for BDS for now. As JDG, of course, like, this is what we have to talk We got really excited about this early game and it looked really, really Which cool. Which we should. Like that. But, I mean, to place a little bit of uh, gravity on the situation, JDG... I don't think there's any team, like with so many people, the team fighting is pretty good, Chronicler. And we're at a stage it's of the game bad. now where it, the game becomes about um, the, the team fighting aspect of it. So oh, I don't know whether no. BDS are quite ahead far enough. Yeah, very straightforward replay. Adam just gets caught, doesn't have his flash, can't walk that far up. And JDG, they do have uh, 
basically an infinite amount of CC, including Ruler, whose uh, former CC is death. So <laughs> trying to walk That's up too aggressive, one. it is. No counterplay to that one. Uh, it, the moment you walk up too far, particularly without Flash, you don't really have anything that you can do against that. But I think BDS, their instinct was right, but you do see any mistake you make against JDG and you will get promptly punished. TP is gonna get channeled, will be finished. BDS is respecting with missing there. I do think that's the good call. And you see, this is where I'd expect BDS to really have to overperform, right? Because this is where we get into the JDG comps. Yeah. Yes, they're down a little bit of gold, but in the grand scheme of things, doesn't matter that much. Ruler hasn't been put behind in any noticeable or, or, or uh, significant way. And you still have Knight, who's in an awesome spot, f uh, sitting on, I think, five stacks on the Dark Seal. Might upgrade that, going for a more damage focus build as well with the Sork Pen Boots. And you're going to have to find a way around that duo in missing and 369, who are going to keep the access to the backline uh, very, very tight knit. Yeah. One thing that is definitely going well for BDS is the fact that Cranny is just even with Ruler right now. He is. Um, just having a pretty good time. Those Quick Blades are going to be coming through in a few moments' time. 369 turning up in mid lane, but not going to be able to find Cranny oh. as Knight. All right, will he get the bad news? Flash is available for Adam, and he will not need it because Cease and Assist does come on down. LeBrov looking for Knight. He's burning, he's ticking. It's not going to be enough, but Sheo's there with a Flash Smite to take down the Ari. In the meantime, though, um, the Rift Herald's going to crush this outer turret in mid and is possibly going to get another Ooh, charge as yeah. well. So you kill Knight, you'll probably be able to get an inner as well. So I think by the end, it will be a net positive. If they can get this turret, it'll be a positive gold trade for BDS. That is three flashes, oh, sorry, two flashes, three ultimates invested. Uh, give up a lot of mid control. The fact you're able to get that inner though means that in terms of gold, by the end of the world, Shale going in really aggressively here. Yeah, really aggressively. Uh, it's gonna get knocked up. Crowny and LeBrov are going to turn up here. Shale should be taken down, but can they actually stand a chance in this fight as the Ram is going to pass by Crowny? They will be able to escape. Of course, pretty slippery is good old Rakan, so LeBrov's okay. Yeah, I, I do not think Shale thought that all those people were there, uh, which uh, kind of explains, because he did have reinforcements on the way in Crowny and LeBrov. That is really rough, because that is now Flash gone on Sheo, but also Crowny's sums and ultimate are gone. I wouldn't be surprised if we see JDG try and, and, and put a lot of pressure here. And uh, We do see that uh, Ari is incredibly slippery here. Uh, BDS also not quite able to get the uh, clean CC layering right, the silence into the ultimate, into uh, I have to say, the Evercon. Evercon. again was absolutely fantastic. Yeah, Knight plays that as well, as you could reasonably expect. And then Sheo here, misjudging how many people, I think, are in his own jungle. They don't have a lot of control. And uh, JDG actually, I think, in the long run, might call worth on that trade. What's important, though, is to what extent is JDG actually going to be able to walk up to any of these objectives? And are they going to be able to make use of the fact that BDS is down a couple of summoners? Well, the win probability powered by AWS is still saying that it is BDS favored, but not by a large amount. Um, and I have a feeling that that is probably going to continue on a downward trend unless we see something else, unless we see a little bit more of these coordinated plays that BDS have been able to put together that kill on tonight, that is great. But doing that while JDG are grouped in mid, ready to destroy two turrets. That's when things can get a little bit more worrying. Just the fact, though, that um, we start off the day. T1, obviously the second seed of the LCK, but still, it's T1. It's yeah. T1 at Worlds, right? Like, it, it, the, the org is always going to have insane expectations. Being very, very tightly matched by Team Liquid. And now the fourth seed of the LEC who had to fight their way and reverse swept PSG, in yeah. play-ins. Is, uh, is having a performance such as this, it's it's a wonderful start to the Swiss stage. Regardless of the outcome here, I think this soul point for JDG is so big and all BDS, uh, you need to either get a pick or start the Baron about 15 seconds ago. Yeah. Um, because now time has passed and JDG is really starting to punish, I think, some of the hesitation from BDS. Yeah, BDS, I think, uh, struggling to figure out what the next step is going to be. And like you were talking about, this next dragon is going to be extraordinarily important. And even the resistances that you gain from the Mountain Drake. But okay, we've got the Baron started. Kanabi is obviously right here. Are we flipping? I reckon that sounds like a decent I idea. Don't know this about time Adam. Adam is on top of his own ward instead of the enemy's one. And let's see where the ruler can keep himself alive because he is going to face check the brush. There's the silence. 
see Killer Instincts to get himself out of the way, and he will survive with the Cleanse now down. Adam also has to flash defensively. It's a trade of Summoners. Not exactly end of the world from either team. That could have been worse for JDG, though. I think BDS wanted to make sure that JDG would fall for it, but if the rest of BDS isn't ready to follow up the moment that Ruler has the Killer Instinct out, that play is not worth it. The flash on Adam is incredibly valuable and allows him so much more background access. And yeah, I think if you're, if you're JDG, start it up. Well, immediately it is going to get spotted here. Lebrov getting himself towards that backline. And Shea immediately turned on. His Volt Breaker's on cooldown. The Charm comes in. The layering of CC is perfect. And Knight says goodbye, enemy jungler. It's time to take down the Baron. And that is some pretty clean setup here from JDG. Missing now. Just acting as gatekeeper to deny the rest of BDS. And stopping this Baron is going to be a heck of a tall order. 369 taking a bit of damage, but he's just buying space. Adam spinning, but I don't think he's winning. Is now Rulers on the board with a kill on Crowny. LeBrov goes down as well. And Adam's just going to have to get out of there. Petrifying Gaze is not named quite well enough at this point in time is now Rulers looking for a little bit more. Noxious Blast not connecting. The knockup is there. And Nuke goes down as well. JDG, they just kill all of them. It's a clean ace. A little bit of delay there. Sheo dying obviously earlier, but this is the reason why JDG is so feared, not just domestically, but internationally. You can't make mistakes. Sheo here just steps up too far. Thinks there on the Baron, gets caught out by Missing, who's having a great game again on the Alistair. And with the jungler gone, JDG feels extremely comfortable. Crowny isn't even able to get off an ultimate, right? Like, uh, yeah. I think he did have it, have it available. Not 100% sure with Spectator Client, but just gets 100 to 0. Even if he did have it, there was never any opportunities. That layering of CC that JDG have perfected over the year, and it's a 5 for 0, and they get Baron to boot. They do. They get everything. And it look like the setup. This is the thing. The way that JDG play around yeah. this vision, it looks almost like it's just a textbook being read out to you. By the way, this is how you take a Baron PS. You get a cooldown from the enemy jungler, and you kill them, and then you take Baron. Look at how easy it is. Baron power play is big. Runa doesn't have his flash available, but... 5.6k. Yeah, without, uh, without Garen, I, I don't think you're killing a lot of people here. Well, Garen is trying to kill a turret. Let's see whether this demolish is going to help him remove that, and he does do so. Close to a 6,000 Red Bull bounty. Baron power play until that turret goes down, which, like you say, is at least going to be a bounty. But trading a bounty for your Nexus is never really something that we would recommend. And now the win expectancy has gone from a little bit in favor to BDS to 90%, close to almost touching the bottom in favor of JDG. And BDS fought valiantly. Might be trying to go for one more play here. 369 isn't here right now. Yeah, there is the cease and desist. The silence is down onto Kanabi, but he just turns it immediately. The Jarvan going to be the first one to go down. Sheo trying to get himself out of there. LeBrov is going to be the sacrifice, and Nuke's going to go down as well. And now Ruler kind of taking matters into his own hands alongside Knight, who collects a triple kill, tidying up the fight. And you get Kanavi, but at what cost? At cost of your Nexus Atlas. JDG. Gonna push on here. With a draft like this, you're given some leeway. And man, did they use it. Well, I tell you what, BDS, they at least made it interesting, especially in the early stages of that game. And you know, there's that Xerxes moment. There's the gods can bleed, that sort of stuff. They're not bleeding as far as their score line here in the tournament, but they at least did in the early game of this one. JDG's team fighting though, man.